Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Mallory Wesleyan Church. As people start to filter in here, uh, it's a great morning, God's kingdom, right? We praise him, we thank him for all the blessings, all the things in, that he has brought uh, for, for, his, for our good, for his, his glory. It's amazing. I'm going to read from Psalms. Um, I'm going to read Psalm 103 this morning to start off our service. So Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost beating must praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with all good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Amen. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father who has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. For as man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it, and it's gone. And its place remembers no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. His righteousness with their children's children, who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you his mighty ones who do his bidding, obey his word. Praise the Lord, all of his heavenly hosts, his servants who will do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. We are here to worship that God, Lord God Almighty. Jesus Christ, who was compassionate enough to come to earth to pay it all for our transgress transgressions, to pay it all for you, for us. It is great. So when I say it is great to be in his house this morning, that's what I mean. As fall is coming out and our churches kind of rolling out some of our things again, I ask you to plug in to God. You can do it alone. You can read the Bible, worship at home, but there's something missing in that. And I think this last year may have shown us a little bit of that, that, that solo Christianity in, in the greatest thing. So come to some of our small groups. We have one this evening at 5 p.m., uh, mine is on spiritual gifts. We have Pastor Greg's on Tuesdays at 6.30, and we have Jeanette's on Thursdays at 6? 5.30. At 5.30. Don't, you don't have to go to a mall, but find ways to renew your mind, renew your heart, and renew your spirit in plugging in to God and what he's doing. Today, um, at 2 o'clock, is our a celebration of life service for Matthew White, who was a tender of our church, dear to our hearts. And so um, after the service today, you're welcome to chat a little bit and have a little bit of coffee, that kind of thing. But 
you remember, you're on a ticking t clock there. People are going to be filtering in around two, and you might want to be able to go out and get some lunch and be able to come back for those who have that going on. So make sure, um, you know, just a light fellowship after the service today, because we're going to come here to remember Matthew and to talk about him as well. So those who have that on their minds and hearts, make sure we do that. Um, and then next Sunday, um, this weird guy up here, your pastor, is going to be ordained down at the Victory Highway Church in Corset, New York. And if you know where that is, um, I don't, I don't know. Some of you probably know where that is. It's, it's, it's a little far away. Um, so if you want to come, you are all invited. I've invited everybody who's been a part of my life and journey as far as getting to ordination. Um, it is at six o'clock at Victory Highway Church. Yes. And uh, Sue has posted on uh, our Facebook, I believe, yeah, on our Facebook, a link to the live stream option if you, if you want to live stream from your home and watch a, a nice, wonderful church service from our district uh, there with ordination as well. So you're welcome to do that option too. Um, yeah, any other announcements or things coming up? Yes, Donna. Ladies, Also, thank you very much, Carlene, for the baskets. Okay. And anyone else who is uh, throwing me a basket up and wants to hear for me for the for the retreat, and also if you still are not planning on going and don't donate a basket, we'll continue to fund. We love it. All those proceeds that we get from those baskets go to Jeff and Tony. And I know Jeff and Tony had to cancel a couple of women's retreats there because they had the COVID a month or so ago. Oh. So we're, um, anything we can do to help them out and. Um, any ideas anybody has? Um, we're all set to go. We're going to have Irene Banks as our speaker, and looking forward to seeing you all there. All right. So those who uh, we need here, um, those who want to go to the ladies' retreat, see Donna, get her some money. October is going to sneak up on you. I'm telling you, it's it's already halfway through September. Did you guys know that? It's sneak, it's, sneak, it's like passing right by. Uh, so it's going to come before you know it. Ladies retreats the first week in October, and please see her for that. Other announcements, other things going on? Well, let's uh, have a word of prayer, and we'll start worshiping our Lord. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for gathering us here to be with you. Lord, renew our hearts. Help us to cast away and set aside all worries, all doubts, and all fears, Lord. Have your spirit rest inside of us, inside of our hearts, and help us to focus in on you, focus in on your presence, focus in on your love and your grace that abounds forever for us. Thank you, Lord, for gathering your people in this place today. Help us to rejoice in the wonderful things that you have done. And help us continue to pray for those who are hurting, for those who are sick, those who are struggling, even to, to breathe breath or get out of bed. And for the lost in our community, Lord, help us to continue to remember and pray for them all days. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
steps that you have for us to make um, steps in your kingdom, Lord. Just help us, Lord, today. Help us to listen. Help us to be with you. In this
this place and beyond. Have you reign in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls, Lord. We desire you so deeply. More than songs. More than things. More than money. You are our everything. And we worship you here today. Thank you, God. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God loves us all. Praise God. Wow. Well, if we could have a couple of volunteer ushers this morning help us out with this morning's offering. ask you to bless these gifts that we are about to receive as an, as an act of worship, that we will worship you more than these things that we're giving today, that we desire you, that we want you to reign in our lives and in our hearts. Lord, please bless the leaders of this church and their ministries, Lord. Help them to grow and have ideas and be able to make things happen. Just bless them immensely, Lord, and strengthen them with your spirit. Help that this money and our talents and our gifts go towards serving your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
someday with our Lord Jesus, him embracing us. Heard the streets are paved with gold and there's a mansion just for me. I'll probably invite my wife. Show my curtains. <laughs> That'll be good. Before we dismiss our children uh, for Children's Church, uh, what I wanted to do today is, uh, every once in a while, I, I just like uh, to remind us um, and to, as, as a congregation together, our, our, our unity, our togetherness, and I think something that illustrates that very well is the Lord's Prayer. And so I was hoping we could all stand and say the Lord's Prayer together um, as a congregation to start off our prayer time. So I'm gonna say the first line and then I'll have you join in, okay? This is how this is how he said you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. It's just, it's one of those things. If we don't do it, people don't do it. If we don't remember it, the next generations won't remember it. And it's important to, to remind ourselves to wash our minds with the Word of God and to, to do that. So those who are 3 to 11 years old in chronological age can head on downstairs to our children's programming this today. Looks like Miss Marty's down there. Who, who else we got down there? Ryan, we settled that down. I really appreciate that we have a, a junior church. Not just because I have a, 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 a little man who wants to be a man now, uh, but just I just appreciate a lot of those volunteers that help out down there every week. So, so let's turn it over for prayer time. What prayers or praises, things that have gone on? One praise I have is that there was nearly 30 men here yesterday Ooh, yeah. for our men's feast. And thank you for going. We'll all put that together. You know, we, you know, it's that many men in one place. You know, the building started to tilt a little bit, especially with all the meat we ate and all the food we ate. But it was good. And he uh, has plans of maybe doing something like that again relatively soon. I think that would be a fantastic thing. So, other prayers and praises. Yes, uh, Sherry. Uh, more from Nancy and Kevin's marriage for them. They woke up this morning. Boy. 
we'll pray for them and their electric problems. That's that's definitely not nothing to mess with. So, Rover. Is that Friday? Is that Friday or Thursday? Friday, I think. Friday, okay. 24th. Pray for Grover on that. Ron? A couple things. Uh, Russ and Sharon Thomas are both uh, back home. Keep them in prayer because uh, that COVID takes a long time uh, to get out of your system, especially they both are on oxygen. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, the prayers for Don and me. We had a wonderful West Coast trip. I found out that uh, my five-week-old grandson considers me his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was awesome. Thank you for, for uh, safe travels. Excellent. Mike? Yeah, it says the first thing that Get the prayers for Mike for his truck fix. Now he's got that trailer. He's got to move it somehow. He's got to kind of get that going. So, Rich. Uh, prayers for my cousin her and her family. They, their oldest son died of the COVID yesterday. What was his name? Who, who passed away? What was his name? I get emails from our, our district as well, um, from the Wesleyan Church and stuff, and a retired pastor had passed away recently from coronavirus as well. He, had, you know, he was in his 70s, I believe, and he had, he had you know, long retired, but there's definitely a lot of that just in our the communication, the interpastor communication, people get sick or people are suffering and that kind of thing. It's a definite thing out there, so, yes? Uh, three of our neighbors down here in town have COVID. So keep them in your prayers. Jane's two grandsons have it. And her and Bob are feeling well. They've come down with something. They went and had a test and they're negative, but they're still not feeling well. So keep that family all of them in your prayers, please. Yeah. Um, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. God. Thank you. And I'm, you know, just letting them know we've been praying for them, you know, the Fluff family. So. Carlene. I have a praise and a prayer request. Uh, praise is that our former pastor, Luke Reed, some of you may remember the young man, um, has now been assigned to a pastor in Maine. A little bitty church. I saw it on Facebook, so I, I texted him, and he's very excited. Very excited to get going on that. Yeah, he's got his own own home church now, so yeah. pray for him immensely. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would ask prayer for my daughter Kate. She is in Alabama, driving through the tornado slash hurricane zone, uh, bringing trucks to Alabama and then coming home. Her name is Kate. 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 She went down with two other drivers to deliver tractors down there, and then they're, they're coming back together. So I'll, I'll, I write all these things down. You guys see me do that every week. And so I put down Kate driving through a hurricane. That's just a, it's a fun little, you know, like little, little things inside my brain. Donna. The last time I was here in Asper, when we went to Maine, that I was 
was hoping to see a moose. Yes, and I did. did. And yay. He did. He tried to come on the highway, and his car flashed its lights. And Ryan goes, I went down on a high beam. Why would he be flashing his lights at me? And I said, because there's all the moose in the road. <laughs> and there was. <laughs> And we got to see that moose, and then we were going down another highway, and there was a bull moose in the ditch, but we were kind of going a little bit too fast before I'd seen it. We couldn't get back to get a picture, but I did enjoy seeing my two moose that I got to see. <laughs> and I also know why we never went to uh, Montana in the big rig, because it takes you 15 hours to drive across the state of Montana. Wow, I didn't think it was ever going to come to an end. <laughs> but it was a beautiful scenery. <laughs> it felt good to be from the East Coast one week and the West Coast the following week. That was pretty amazing. Awesome. All right, did you have something? Well, continue to pray for my sister Wanda. She went and she's still going to have more attacks. So just keep her in your prayers. Vic is one of those silent servants that everyone knows, you know, um, and we just need to keep him in our prayers. He's been away for a bit, and uh, I'm sure partly it's because of his hip surgery, but I think another part is Jen, and so making sure to pray for her health and their well-being, and, you know, that they would have relaxation, comfort, peace in that home, so. Ron? I visited Vic on Friday, and he is feeling kind of down, and he, and he uh, it's not too much on the hip surgery. That's repairing and healing pretty well, but he doesn't feel like he can or wants to leave Jen's side. He's, he's staying right there with her. So make sure we're praying for Jen and Vic, and Vic as well. His heart aches. Shirley. Worshipper sings loudly and badly, just so you know. You can sing loudly and badly, it's okay. Once in a while, I, I can put a couple notes together, and we're good. Grover. Um, a close friend of mine that I went to school with, his dad went in for a pacemaker, and while he was waiting for the surgery, he got pneumonia in the hospital. He's back home, he is recovering, he's doing better, but he's still got to go in and have this pacemaker. Cassie's just going to take a shotgun instead. No. Get your knee hinge from your shoulder. You either got to go pistol or crossbow. There you go. Uh, it was a joke. <laughs> All right. Sherry. I have a phrase. I think I pulled this phrase at church. I told some people. Um, I know it's supposed to praise about the transmission, but I don't think it's supposed to praise about I was catch his phone, sir.
Dragon's Gun and his division. That's awesome. Awesome. Other prayers, other praises. Yes, sir. Jim. Yeah, I got to go next week for another cat scan on my heart. So I'm So CAT scan for Jim on his heart next week and then continued prayer for the Smith family. Excellent. Other prayers, other praises? Mike? The other thing is to continue to remember uh, those who are close to Matthew White, um, as the service is going to be today at 2. Um, we continue to pray for them. and All the things that go on in the next month or so, sometimes it's difficult. So, um, Those who want to come up and kneel with me at the altar are welcome to. Um, otherwise, you can bow your hearts and heads where you are. Lord, you are our master, you are our king, and we bow to you today. We come to you humbly and open with these prayers and petitions, and we lay them at the foot of the cross, knowing that you can help all of these things, that you can be there through the darkest times of our days. Lord, we praise you for the wonderful healings and the provision that you've given to our church family throughout this time. Lord, we remember the um, people who have, who have gotten healed um, throughout all these prayers. But Lord, just over and over again, I see this big word on my sheet here, COVID-19, over and over and over again. And so Lord, we pray for our neighbors in this community. We pray for Mike's brother who's recovering. We pray for um, the Rich's um, person, Charlie, who had passed away in their family. Um, just all of these people who, Russ and Sharon Thomas, uh, and all these other people that for some reason I'm, I'm blanking on right now, who have encountered this in their lives. Um, thank you for seeing many of them through God and providing doctors and medicines to be able to help treat these things. But Lord, we continue to pray for this, this crisis that's about in our community. It's impacting so many lives and so many people. Lord, we ask that you help those who we'll be praying for today in their recovery, because uh, it is a long recovery as well, God, but also in the hurts and the pains of uh, receiving the virus and all of that. Help them and heal them, God. And those who are additionally immune compromised or additionally susceptible to that, we just ask for your protection around them, that you would have a hedge of protection, especially those who attend our church and are involved in our church, Lord. We would just ask you to protect all of those um, from this virus in our community here at Mallory. Lord, we pray for um, Jim, who has a CAT scan of his heart coming up this next week. And we pray for Grover's scan here this um, this week. Help both of them with their scans and just have it come back with good results, with nothing, nothing special, and that everything is working great and doing great in their scans. Um, we praise you and thank you that the Pluff family um, has just a six-month biopsy follow-up follow after, after the biopsy. We just thank you, Lord, that they've been able to come through that and that things are going well for them now. We pray for Vic and Jen Lewis um, in their home. 
um, with the, the pain and the hurting and the sickness that is there, God. Give them comfort, peace, um, and help them recover through this. Be with Jen and let her know that you love her, God. Show her your grace and your love. We continue to pray for that over and over. You show her your grace and love uh, for her to draw close to you in these times. We pray for Barb's sister, Wanda, that you would help her and, and continue to um, see her through. Um, we pray for Mayor, the Smith family, um, that you would uh, continue to help them and heal them. Lord, we just pray for all of these needs that have come before us today. We pray for Kate, who is uh, driving in, uh, in bad weather and with the hurricane coming up on the coast and all the hurricane relief and the victims from the hurricanes that have come this year, God, we just pray that you help them and heal them and help their rebuild their homes and do all sorts of uh, things to get their lives back, Lord. Just provide opportunities and the ways for that to happen. But Lord, we just come to you today to be in your presence, to bring all of these prayers and the, all the unspoken ones and all the ones that are on our hearts, heavy on our hearts, God, to lay them before you because we know that you are greater, that you are more, that you can, that you hear us and that you can help these things for your glory. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So for those that have been here the last few weeks, I've been doing a series on fear called Fear Not. Whom shall we fear? Nothing of God's on our side. And the last week I talked a little bit about um, a special kind of fear thing called a fear dance. You guys remember I was dancing up here. Oh boy, don't remember it. It was horrible. Uh, uh, but basically there's an inner emotional cycle that happens where I hurt and so I react or I hurt then I feel and then I react and this emotional cycle goes over and over inside of ourselves to make us and reinforce fear well the world has a few things to say about fear Let's see what the world says oh here we go fear is the path to the dark side Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Some philosopher there. There you go. What else we got? The brave man is not who he does not feel afraid, but who but he who conquers that fear. Nelson Mandela. One more, right? Yeah. And action breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it, but go out and get busy. Can we keep that one up there for a few minutes, Sue? Um, the world, and, and Yoda, just so you know, Yoda uh, gives us some uh, interesting takes on how fear, how to handle it. Um, but ultimately, we talked the first week about how God in our lives and how God has the ultimate victory, the assurance that God is with us and will help us through all of that is nothing in comparison to the fear that we might fear, feel in our moment. But it gets to be so big. It gets to be so wide. I'll tell you, one of the, one of the times... I was the most afraid and how I started to deal with it. Um, actually, let me ask a question. Can I, can I get a volunteer quick? Jeanette, can I have you volunteer? Oh, she's got a sheepish smile, okay. Jeanette, last year, September 19th, 2020, where were you? I have no idea. <laughs> where were you, what were you doing? No idea? No. Do you remember uh, anything about the day? I don't know what day it was. Oh, 
Don't know what the weather was like? Probably like this. Probably like this, okay. All right, well, let me ask another question, okay? September 11th, 2001. Where were you? I was at work. You were at work? What were you doing? I was working. Wait, wait, <laughs> working? Well, what were you doing for a job? What were you, what were you working in? Uh, accounting. Accounting, okay. What was um, your thoughts that day? What, what came over you that day? You mean after the... Oh, yeah. Fear. Fear. <laughs> Fear was there, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, what was the weather like that day? It was beautiful. It was gorgeous like this. It was gorgeous like this. All right, thank you. What happens is, is trauma imprints us a little bit with some extra little memory stuff there for us to remember specific things. Now, I didn't want to ask Gloria um, what day what she did uh, September 19th because I heard it's Anniversary, right? <laughs> it's an anniversary, right? 50th anniversary here at Thanks. Because so that Trump traumatic memory stuck in her hand. No. <laughs> no, but it's, a, it's congratulate them today on their, on their anniversary as well. Uh, because these little moments, they imprint on us and we can remember things. I remember deeply where I was. Um, 2001, September 11th. Sorry, sorry for showing my age here. I was in college in Fredonia. Um, I walked into classes like I normally would. Um, I took the elevator up to the second floor. It was kind of vacant. It was a little weird because normally it's crammed like wall to wall people trying to get in the elevator and all that. And I was walking by the second floor. I think it was a computer lab of some kind. Um, and they had TVs flipped um, so you could see the first tower burning. Um, you can see the, the impact from the first um, twin, twin towers uh, burning there. And there was two different TVs and all the students were lined up against, against this plexi, like a, almost like a fish tank kind of a window where you could see into the room, but you were out in the hall. And so I just stopped where I was and I looked and see what people were doing. And uh, I, I actually saw the second plane hit the second tower. And I was like, this is live? This is what's going on right now? Um, what am I supposed to do? Um, and a different type of fear that I had never experienced before came over me. You know, since that time, I've had other fears. And, you know, you know my, my father my father had passed away in my 20, when I was in my 20s, and there was fear and grief, and that was just a different kind of fear than that. Um, and I could recognize that different. You know, I had fear of becoming a pastor for the first time and preaching my first sermon, and that was kind of weird and fearful a little bit in its own kind of way. But I walked into the classroom, because uh, I had to get to class, right? And I sat down, and the teacher just told us class is dismissed for the rest of the day. The, the school has is, is canceled classes for the rest of the day. Go back to your apartment, go back to your uh, houses, um, and, and, you know, and stay safe. And so I got in my car. I had a little flip phone, track phone that my mom had, had bought me in case of emergencies, and I tried to call her just to say, hey, what's going on? And all circuits were busy, couldn't get through. Extra fear <laughs> came about, about me. I've never heard that before on a phone. And so I got to the um, house I was staying at, and I used a landline phone and was finally able to get through, talk to them a bit. Do we know anyone in New York City? Do we, do we have, you know, can we pray? What, what can we do? I was just a baby Christian at the time, a little, little kid Christian compared to who I am now. Um, and I just had fear come all over me. And uh, I, I did go uh, in, in, my, in my unknowing of what to do. I did go to my Bible. Um, I, I opened it up. I read New Testament passages because that's typically what I do. I'm going to share you a little bit with the passages that I read, to, I read and um, have reflected on throughout the years today about that. But I wanted to, um, in my generation, um, so 40s-ish um, and, and a little younger, um, that was a, an event beyond an event in my lifetime. And I think for the generation that came after me, Millennials, whatever you say about them, okay? But millennials uh, came after me, and uh, they didn't experience 
uh, 9-11 the way I did. Because I was, I was, I was an adult-ish. Um, I was still old enough to be an adult-ish. It was different for the next generation. And so I had never experienced that kind of fear, the kind of fear that my destruction is imminent, that things around me are way beyond what I could ever control, that I have no control over my life, that my life is just, that's the kind of feelings I felt. Um, and I really didn't feel like that. You know, once in a while I have a, you know, I have a dream and a fear, fear of death, but then I, I just, you know, resound in myself that, you know, I'm with God and God is for me. No one can stand against me. And I can get, get through those kind of little moments in life at times. And I never felt that kind of fear until 2020. For some reason, in March 2020, that kind of fear came back over me for a while. And I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to take action. I was an adult now. Before, in my 2001, I was still kind of a kid. I really couldn't do anything. I was a, you know, who, who knows, no at all college student. But I was an adult now. I was, you know, in my older 30s. Obviously, I should have more power of some kind. I should have more wisdom of some kind. I could, I could take some sort of action of some kind to impact my world to make that 2020-based fear be less, go away, not hit me as hard. But, but I couldn't. I, um, I've said this a couple different times. I, I, th I thought maybe information would help me not have that fear, and that was definitely not the, <laughs> not the way of that, because there was no information to be had. Um, but as I reflect back on this last year, and I think about that brief fear that I had, this is how I went through a process and I, and, I, and I went through the Bible and I want to read uh, Philippians, uh, parts of Philippians chapter 4 with you today. Um, so let's open up to that. Everyone copes differently. Everyone has different ways of handling things. I'm sure people in 2001 were extremely angry and felt they wanted to enact righteous judge, justice on um, the terrorists that had created terror in our lives. And I'm sure in 2020, it was similar that we wanted to find a way to take an action to help the things um, go well in our lives. But my fear was helped through this. Chapter four, let me read it from the projection here. Uh, four, four through nine, and then I'm going to read a little bit more. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. That's it, right? I think maybe, yeah. So, to be honest, this is, since that time in 2001, I really think Philippians 4 has been a quite of a life verse for me. Me personally, and like I said, everyone deals with these fears and these emotions and things differently. To me, what I wanted to have and what I couldn't have in both situations was peace. I wanted my heart to be at peace. I wanted to have a rest 
than I had prior to. And I think when I hear people say, I want to get back to normal, I think that's what they are saying. That they want to have the peace and security and that feeling of society in 2019 now. But what happens just after 2001, 9-11, the difference in how we, we, we change after an event. It impacts us so strongly that we change, society changes around us, and, and things are never the same. I, I watched a an interview recently of Condoleezza Rice, and uh, she had said that they were waiting in the wings at every moment for the next attack to happen, those following weeks after 9-11. They're just waiting. They were waiting, ready to respond, ready to do anything they could to make sure that those kinds of things wouldn't happen again, and they got through it. They, you know, terror attacks really haven't been that kind of a deal since that time, through some of the measures they've, they've put in, but I, it's, I needed something to do. And so what Paul here is talking to us about is that peace doesn't come from your circumstance. Peace doesn't come from all the things around you. Peace comes from God. When he says, do not be anxious at anything, but in everything, prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. That's what he means. God is, or sorry, Paul is no schlub who has been through, you know, a hangnail or two. He's imprisoned. He's been probably beaten. He's probably been scorned. He's seen probably some of the disciples or know that some of the disciples are going to be martyrs. People are dying for the sake of Christ in his life. It's a fear beyond what I can imagine. I don't think I can imagine what it would be like to have a fear that at any time someone could just pull me, drag me off, and kill me just because they felt like it. It's beyond what I can imagine. But this is what Paul says to the Philippians, and I think if we put ourselves in the context of when, how, and what is being written here, in every situation, these are the things we need to do. Why? Because Paul is giving, Paul is helping illustrate um, something that's in a popular song I used to like, used, used to like, fear doesn't stand a chance the presence of your love. Fear versus trust. Both of them can't exist at the same time inside of us. If we are so sitting in our home like the Dale Car Carnegie uh, quote that we said earlier, and we are just sitting and resting there, and doing nothing about the fear that we have, it will just grow. It will just continue. And he says to do action. He says to take action. Um, <clears throat> for Christians, that action is trust. And as I started to trust things in both of these experiences, you know, I did become angry at first, you know, and I had a bunch of anger in the 2020 stuff, and I and I, I, I wanted things to be different, and I wanted things to go different ways, and I, you know, all these things that I try to do in my own strength first. Um, but eventually I had to settle my heart in and say, trust is the way. Trust and focusing my heart, my mind, and my service on the kingdom of God and what I need to do for him and trusting in him is truly the way to conquer that fear. My hurt that I feel that I react has been programmed over time that my reaction, most of the time, not saying I'm perfect, okay, I am human, 
Turn to God. What does God have to say about this? What, what trust, what assurance, what thing or peace can I um, attribute to God in this situation, in this time? And he goes on to talk about a task list. What's the next slide here? Oh, so yeah, self-care. So this is that fear dance slide from last time. This is what we're doing to take care of ourselves in this fear dance. One more slide here. He says to do these things. Focus what is, on tr what is true, what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, admiral, excellence, and praiseworthy. These are the things that help me to get to that point of trust, to get to that point of assurance, to, that, get to that point of peace from God. And again, like I said, information was one of the ways I thought I could trust, but it really wasn't. It, it really confused me, and, and that's, that was in, interesting to me at the time. So what could I trust? I could trust this. I could trust my good Christian brothers and sisters. I could trust my fellow pastors and the network of supports that were around me. Did I do pure things? Did I act in accordance in purity or in holiness in the way I would want to act if God was in the room with me? Did my mind go to, because this is, this is a thought practice, this is our thought life here. This is not, I know it seems like we need to do, American culture is that if something tangible task we can do. But when it comes to fear, which conquers us a lot, which just gets on us a lot, it is a mental task. It's a mental exercise of getting that focus on these things. Things that are praiseworthy. Things that are worthy of, of my thoughts, of my godly thoughts, because that is how peace and that is how trust will build inside of us. Now, one thing I want you to notice is I didn't say forget. I really think that we can't forget things. You know, with Jeanette coming up here and saying what things were like on that day for her in 2001, I can't forget the things that happened in 2000. I can't forget the things that happened last year. And I don't think God calls us to forget. But we have a choice in our own minds. And then through these wonderful things that we are to focus on our minds, if I focus on something that's lovely, my wife Susan, uh, then maybe I'll show love to my wife Susan through that focus on loveliness. If I focus on something that's true, maybe I'll share truth with people. If I focus on pure things and say, no, I didn't take, I didn't have that take on it at all. I thought that I should do this instead to those people around us who are acting totally and driven totally by their fear in those situations. It is hard to have that type of control and presence of mind, but in our times, as we've talked about, times of a Christian I think are going to get more fearful as the years go on um, in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Maybe I will be in a place where I will be thrown in jail for not uh, marrying a homosexual couple or a non-binary couple or whatever other language you want to throw out there today with our changing culture and changing world around us. Maybe we'll get thrown in prison for gathering together. But I'll do that together with you because I know that's true and faithful and pure and things that we need to do as Christians. Because I won't fear those things if I can focus on these things that are of God. Because with God on my side, we can do anything. Now, does this work for all fears? Does it work for my grief or the loss of my father or other times where I'm kind of like nervous up here and chattering my teeth and I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Can I sing that right now? 
Um, sometimes it helps me. I go to different scriptures for that and, 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 and different things, but for me, that type of fear, this type of global fear that I have no control over anything, that my life seems like an ant in comparison to the, uni the vast universe and the vast galaxies out there. But God has it all in his hand. Helps me know that God has it in his hand. I, I don't know. I'm a sci-fi guy. You guys know that. Um, I, I watch weird videos. Like, there's a video I watched where um, we compared the size of the earth to the size of the sun. Um, and, and so, like, here's, here's an example. All of the planets in our solar system could fit inside Jupiter. And Jupiter is at least one-tenth the size of the sun. <laughs> like, less than one-tenth the size of the sun. It's big. And that's a galaxy. And a galaxy... Our Milky Way, Milky Way galaxy is one galaxy in who knows how many in this great universe. It makes me feel like an ant, less than an ant. But I have a God who cares about me. I have an all-powerful, sovereign, mighty Lord who cares about me. And my focus of my thoughts writing these things down, Paul tells us that this stuff matters in a Christian life. It matters to the Philippians, and it matters to us today, that in every situation, we must turn to God, and we must focus on these things. Now we're going to go to my favorite passage, of course, here. What's the next one? Philippians 4, 10 through 13. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last your renewed concern for me, but indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show. And I am not saying this because I'm in need. Again, I learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And if, if you're ever asking what pa Pastor Andrew's life verse is, that's, what, that's my life verse. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. But in the context, it's that Paul knows what it's like in the greatest of times, in the most horrific, horrible times. And he turns it all to content by his focus of his mind on the things that are of God. And that is how he can do all things with God who gives him strength. Amen. Let's pray and end with our song. Lord, God Almighty, we thank you that you are big enough, that you are powerful enough, and you are strong enough to conquer any fear, to handle any situation, and to be with us, that you care enough about us so small in this vast universe. You care about me. Lord, thank you for this great love and this great grace that you've bestowed on us. Lord, we turn our hearts to you when we are afraid. Not that we won't be afraid, but that we know that you will conquer all fears. That the assurance that the God of the universe can handle it. We praise you and we thank you for this God. We thank you so much that you loved a sinner like me. Continue, please, to help us in our daily walk with you and the struggles and the trials of this life, whether they big, be big or small. Help us in every situation. And when every situation comes up, God, help us to turn to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 We stand to sing with, our la sing with our last song here.
thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, your grace, and your spirit today. Lord, be with us as we go. Prepare us for uh, this afternoon and for this evening and all the things that we have going on this week. Go with us. Go before us to make the path easy and light. And help us remember the joy that's in our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right. Amen. You're welcome to stay for a few minutes, have some coffee, but remember, you got lunch, and those who are coming back at 2 o'clock for the service, so make sure um, remember that. See you guys next week.